Django class-based views are a very important topic, a scary topic for someone. Uh, this is about me and my contents. Feel free to contact me after the talk or whatever. Um, I'm basically a C and Python programmer. I'm working in the field of satellite radar imagery and processing. Um, about you, you should be Django novices or better. I hope there's not too many Django experts here because it's going to be boring for you. <laughs> I'm going very basic today. Um, you shall be well, someone who completed and understood the Django tutorial and perhaps the, some knowledge about Python object-oriented is preferred because I'm going to talk about classes. However, These are some questions and comments I heard and read about class-based views. Among them, uh, what's the advantage of class-based views? Uh, what happened to my beloved functional-based views? Um, some people just hate Django class-based views or think it is black magic. Um, I think the best way to understand class-based views is to start uh, with plain Django views. What are Django views? For the purpose of, well, for the scope of this talk, I, I think Django is just a process of HTTP requests. You know that Django is a very rich framework, uh, full of things, uh, but for me today, it's just a process of requests. Requests come from another server or a browser, and they are tra transformed into a response. Inside that black box, uh, uh, well, that's a blue box, but whatever, um, there's a very simple mechanism. The URL dispatcher uh, matches the um, uh, URL with a regular expression, as you know, and finds a, w a view that processes that specific URL and that specific HTTP method inside the request. Then it converts it into a response to the template engine or something different. And a view, just like any processing system in computer science, can be monolithic, can be, uh, for example, a, very, a single function, a single big function. And the problem of any monolithic system in computer science is that it is very hard to enhance part of it. Because, for example, if you get a very big function, you have to copy that function and to change the part, the small part you want to enhance. And now you have duplicated code. And you know that duplicated code is an alias for evil, hopefully. So the standard solution for monolithic system is to component, componentize them, to split them in components. And for example, in this very simple diagram, you can um, split the view in several steps. Then you announce just the step you want to announce and leave the others shared with the original view or function. Here, object-oriented uh, comes into play because uh, object-oriented was um, invented exactly for this purpose, to build system made from, uh, by, sorry, um, small components. This is modularization. And was invented to, to easy, um, to allow easy, to allow code to reuse. reuse. Uh, this is what delegation allows. Delegation, inheritance, or composition. Well, enough theory. Show me the code. And this is a small example taken from the official documentation of a class-based view. Um, some imports. Then I define my class uh, view, article list view, and the URL pattern matches the article's URL. This part, as you know, routes the article URL uh, to the article list view. 
please note that I'm not linking the URL to the class. And I'm not linking the URL to an instance of the class, neither to the method. I'm linking the URL with the result of the SBU method, and more on this later. This part defines uh, my view, article list view, as a copy, inherit, it's inherit, it inherits from list view, and I customize it by saying the model uh, is article, is a model I developed in my modules um, file. And those two lines, those two simple lines, uh, give me a lot of stuff. They process this incoming HTTP GET requests. Uh, later I'll show you why I can say this. Uh, they load all article objects from my DB. And they render a template uh, called article list HTML. And inside the template, the list of articles is both in the object list and in the article list variable. And this happens by magic. What happens behind the, sh the scenes? I want to know what happens behind the scenes because I want to understand how class-based views work. Um, so now I'm going to start a small, a little journey inside the class-based views. First, an advice, uh, use the source. Um, Django is an open source project, so go and read the source code. I know that documentation is important, um, natural language documentation, but so source code is already a good documentation, not the only one, but a good documentation about itself. Um, this work, this presentation, was my first journey inside the Django code, and well, uh, I did it, so you can do it too. Um, okay, just a note, um, source is moving, so to give you meaningful line numbers and so on, I stick to 1.5.7, but what I'm going to say is perfectly valid for newer Django versions, 1.6 and 7. And here we are. We um, called, we linked the article's uh, URL, with the article list view as view method, indeed its result. This is very important because the as view method is, uh, well, a long method. I stripped some code, as you can see. And what it does is to return a function. A function defined inside the method, a view, it's called view, it is um, local. It's a function based view, and it does something, it calls uh, self-dispatch and so on, we'll see later, but the very important thing that is that I'm, to the URL dispatcher, I'm linking the URL with the function-based views. So function-based views are not dead. They are still at the core of Django, your beloved function-based views. So uh, class-based views, which are complex sometimes, are just a layer around function-based views. So the question about what happened to function-based views is function-based views are still there. Use them if you want. If you want, you can use class-based views to ease your work, if it works. And the view function here calls self-dispatch. This is the self-dispatch. This is the most important function inside the class-based view system. The most important because it simply selects the path of your request. Basing on the HTTP method inside your request. Let's call it HTTP verb, the, so we don't make a conf confusion between class methods and HTTP methods. HTTP verbs and class methods from now on. Um, our request is a get request, so the incoming HTTP verb is get. Dispatch goes and finds the get function inside the class hierarchy to return handler. And 
yeah, get is provided in our case by base list view, which is a class inside list.py there. And this long and somehow complex function has three interesting lines for me today. The first one is self object list is equal to the result of self get query set. And self um, get query set, sorry, is provided by multiple object mixing. Multiple object mixing gives this uh, method that uh, selects the query set, returns the query set. It returns the query set by using the model I, or we, put inside the class. So this is the first time the class-based views are using a customization I made to my class. Self.model.defaultManager all. This is why th my class is selecting all objects from the DB. Simply because get query set does it. And if you check the uh, lines above, uh, you can see that the first thing that get query set does is to check if the class has a query set um, attribute. This means that I can define the query set here and get query set returns it instead of um, selecting all art, um, objects. This is a fir first thing, uh, first form of customization. And this is a very recurring pattern in class-based views. We will see it again and again. Back to our get function method. Um, the second thing it does is to build the context with the famous get context data method. Get context data is provided again by multiple object mixing. A mixing in Django uh, class based views, lingo is a sort of service class which provides a, a bunch of methods to deal with, in this case, multiple objects. And get context data does a lot of stuff. Um, it, first of all, it gets the query set we passed there, and it tries to extract the context object name. What is the context object name? Is the name that your uh, query set will have in your template. You can see that object list is a key inside the context, inside the context dictionary, and it is linked with the query set itself. But we know that we can have uh, some other variable inside the context with the query set. And it is, this is given by get context object name, which is here, provided by multiple object mixing again. And you can see that, well, the recurring pattern I told you before. The first thing it does is to check if we define the context object name inside the class this way. Mm, in this case, this will be the name of my query set in the template. Otherwise, it does some, well, not so magic, but some Python stuff with the model, and it simply extracts the name of the model. So in my context, I will find object list and article list this time, because my model is called article. Again, back to the get method, the last thing that it does is uh, to call render to response, which is the class uh, equivalent of the render to response function. Um, it is not simple because there, it involves the template system. I'm not going into it now, but uh, please note this line. Template is the result of get template names. Because perhaps you know already, um, you can return a lot of template names and Django tries uh, each of them in order until it finds a valid template which is on disk. And get template names is provided by this um, class with a very simple name, multiple object template response mixing, 
easy to write without typos. And, sorry. And what it does, the first thing it does is to call its super and then um, extract a um, default name. It's a super class, it's a template response mixing. And again, the recurrent uh, pattern. It checks if my class defined a template name. In this case, for example, all articles.html. In that case, this is what, what is returned by the get template names. Otherwise, in this case, it raises an, uh, an exception. And despite of the, the result of the super, um, get templates names in multiple object template response mixing adds this name, this template, which is well known because it is the template you all use when you use uh, class-based views. Um, this is application name slash name of the model underscore list in this case dot html. This is where it comes from. So now you, you can understand why I told you before those three, three things about my code. It processes incoming HTTP GET requests. Yes, because somewhere in the class hierarchy, someone defines the GET method. This time is um, list view. Um, loads all article object because GET query sets performs a all call, sorry, uh, on the um, default manager. And it renders a template called article list HTML. This is given by get templates names. And the list of articles is bought in object list article list variable. This is given by get context data. How do you customize CBS, CBB's behavior? Um, a first way to customize them is to put into the class um, attributes, as you can see the recurring pattern of, of class-based views allows you to put a template name, to put your context uh, object name, and so on. But another way is obviously to override methods. And override in class-based views works just like in plain Python. You may or may not call the super class, and you can call the class anywhere, at the start, at the end, where you want. This time I want to, um, well, augment my context, enhance it, so I need the original context, so I call the super um, version. And, and then I put another key inside the context. By, but now you understand why this works, because there is a get context data in somewhere inside the hierarchy that provides the original context. You can do this with, uh, for example, get query set too. Very simple. Arguments in class-based views. Uh, when we talked about as view before, I skipped uh, those, those three lines. And those three signs are very important. The S view function, well, actually the view function is initializing the class with three variables, which is the original request, the original arguments, and the original keyword arguments coming from the um, URL dispatcher. So this works exactly like function-based views, but you know that everywhere in your class, you can assess the original values. For example, I can define, override the get query set and filter my results using this here. Uh, I changed the URL here. I'm matching uh, four digits, for example, and I'm filtering my query set with that value or I can put it inside my context, for example. So everywhere in your class, you can uh, assess what comes from the um, URL dispatcher. 
from Django 1.5, I think, uh, on, uh, the view is inside the context, thanks to get context data uh, around the hierarchy. So you do not need to um, override the get context data if you want to assess some basic values from your um, URL dispatcher. You can simply call view keyword arguments here in this case. And yeah, this is the um, uh, class hierarchy, which is complex. And this is one of the downsides of class-based views. Many people complain about this. Uh, yeah, indeed, it is complex. It is very rich. And this is where uh, the, the, the methods come from. So you have to go and uh, find them <laughs> some, somehow. Uh, you have to get uh, used to work with this hierarchy. So, a word. CRUD operations and forms. You know that we map CRUD operations to with um, HTTP verbs. And in particular, we map uh, uh, create, read, update, and delete with post, get, put, and delete. So, what we want to do is to understand how we deal with different HTTP methods. Uh, we dealt with uh, get before, but now we have to deal with post, for example. And dispatch to the rescue, because dispatch is the most important function in uh, class-based views. Dispatch goes and finds, if there, if there is one, a method with the same name of your verb. So in this case, for example, this is a redirect view, which is provided by Django, as a very important, very interesting function because it just redirects any requests, any requests, get, post, put, option, delete. And it does this just by implementing a function for each HTTP verb, very simple. Well, it redirects to the get in this case. You can do the same in your view. Okay, how do class-based views deal with forms? Because this is a very important topic in modern web. You know that when you work with forms, you, you may have um, multiple interactions with the same view. Because, for example, the, the, the this usual, the standard, um, case is the user browses a page, so it gets the page, the form, it fills the form and then posts the form. Obviously, you can directly post a form or you can post a form to another address, but usually you post the form to the same address. So your view has to deal with multiple HTTP verbs linked with the same URL. And the, the function based solution is this one, very well known, I think. Uh, it contains an if construct, which tells apart the HTTP verb because of that double interaction. And so now I will see, uh, try to see how class-based views do the same work. And this is pretty much the same as the, the previous section so I just create a not add, in this case, class, which inherits from create view, which is a class provided by Django. Create view, as the name suggests, is um, as to cope with the, the creation of um, another object. And the model I'm working uh, with is a sticky note to some model I defined in models.py. These two uh, lines uh, processes incoming HTTP GET and POST requests, thanks to create view, and thanks to a POST method that we'll see later. They, ran, um, yeah, they render a template called sticky note underscore form dot HTML, and inside the template, the form is uh, um, in the form variable. You know the Django is a very um, uh, beautiful form 
uh, subsystem, which is perfectly valid for class-based views too. And it manages the creation of a sticky note entity. This is important. How does this work? Well, we are after this patch now, because as view and this patch are shared among uh, class-based views, the same as before. Now, POST, provided by base create view, is a very simple function. It just uh, initialized object uh, as none, because we are going to create it. So it's none now, and it calls its super implementation. The super implementation is this one, and for our the lines, well, the, the world function, um, that I'm interested in now. The first one is get form class. This one, again, the recurring pattern. Form class can be provided as an attribute in your class. Either that or you, uh, the, the model forms extracts the form from the model because it tries to out, uh, automate this system. But in the, this case, I provided a um, customized form class. I, defined it somewhere. The second thing it does is to get the form. So it initialized the form. This is the get form class method. It's a very simple. And it, the, the, the only thing is that it extracts the form keyword arguments with that method. And that method is here. It does uh, two things. It uh, extracts the keyword arguments from its super. I'm going into it in a moment. And then it uh, initialized the instance variable inside the keyword arguments uh, with the object itself, which is now. now. Why, does this, um, why does the method do this? Because you know that perhaps the form can be invalid. So perhaps you have to show it again. And because get form keyword arguments is shared among class-based views, for example, update view uses the same method. So he, that time, the object is not none. And the super of this function is uh, also very simple. It initializes the initial uh, key and puts data and files inside the keyword arguments, taking them from the request. So you know you can assess them. Then it checks for the validity of the form and calls either form valid or form invalid. Form valid does the actual uh, object creation by saving the form. Um, so now object is initialized to the actual object that we created. And then it calls it super, which is this one, very simple. It uh, simply redirects to the success URL, which another time is the recurring pattern of class-based views. We can define the success URL in our class here to reverse or to a very simple string. Please note that it is processed to the dictionary of the object, so you can use uh, some pattern matching inside it. Um, uh, sorry, um, variable substitution. Or if you didn't uh, specify a success URL, it uh, uh, redirects to the absolute URL defined by the model itself. If the form is invalid, it renders again the uh, template by passing the context data we developed in, inside our path. So to, to, to let the, the user fill the form again. And this is the uh, form, the, 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 the create view hierarchy, which is more complex than before. Sorry, I didn't write it. <laughs> So now, perhaps, hopefully, you uh, better understood what's behind those two simple lines you write when you start with the class-based view and how you can customize the behavior of the class-based view. 
you have, sorry, you have to go and find the method that implements that part and inherit it and override it, customize it. So you have to know the code. This is one of the downsides of class-based views. They are complex, so you have to, to know them very well to customize them. Some online resources. Um, this is, um, well, my blog, and those are three uh, posts I wrote about class-based views. If you want to recap what I told you before, uh, told you today in a more relaxed way, perhaps, uh, you find it there, uh, everything. Um, this is a very, very uh, important tool, class-based um, views browser. It's very useful when you deal with class-based. It uh, simply um, lists uh, uh, Django generic class-based views and allows you to navigate, to browse them. Um, Django Vanilla Views, this is a very interesting project. It aims to re-implement the class-based view hierarchy in a smaller form, uh, very plain. You can see it here. And it's worth using it or trying it. Some criticism here. Luke Plant is a core Django developer, and this says, uh, well, basically that class-based views were a mistake. Uh, its points are very interesting. At the end of the post, it uh, well, says that it, it is not really true that they are a mistake, but its points are very interesting. Um, I'm, I'm, reporting, I'm putting it here because I think class-based views are not the right tool for every job. They are the right tool for some jobs. And, well, you plant, uh, my opinion uh, says very well what is the job for Django class based views. Um, last, uh, some links to better understand Python or object oriented. Uh, if you want to deal with uh, class based views, you have to know how Python implements object oriented. In the Python implementation of OOP is not trivial. So this is a very long URL, but if you Google for some links to better understand Python OP, you find it. It's a Reddit list well, by me, um, collecting some resources about it. And well, about using source code that uh, post, that very interesting post by, by Jeff uh, Atwood. And that's all. Thank you. If you, that's interesting. Well, thank you for the talk and, and for the resources. You're welcome. Uh, we have a software, Mayan EDMS, Document Management System. It uh, uses uh, the, the Django uh, functions for generic uh, stuff, hmm. and they disappear now in Django 1.6, so we're having a hard time converting them. Yeah. We do a lot of permission checking, which, uh, if the user fails, should not even access the view. In class-based view, what should be the ideal methods for to check for custom permissions for users? Well, if I'm not wrong, there's a very um, interesting project which is Django Authority. I don't remember. I'll check it later and I'll tell you. Um, which implements decorators for uh, class-based views. A very simple decorator that you put around, above your class to um, select who can assess the class-based view. So this is a very, very good project. You, you, can, you can just take it and use uh, out of the box. It's a very good uh, way to, to do this. The actual um, authentication system and authorization system inside the class-based views is a bit complex. And so, Okay, not easy to uh, pick now, but uh, that project is very easy to, uh, to use. Okay. Go and try it. Thank you. Perhaps later we can discuss about it. Yeah, because permission is the, has been the hardest part for us 
to convert function based to class based views, permissions has been very difficult. Yeah, it's not it's a one to one transition. It's a problem of many of them. Okay. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> not, not allowed, <laughs> no, 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 you're not alone. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. Hi. So, uh, regarding the, the question of this yeah. person, there's also the Django Braces project, which is a set of mixins, right. and I believe it has a permission mixin that you can just plug into your inheritance tree and it will do some, some good things. But in general, you can always treat the handle method of your class-based view as you would your function-based view before, and you can decorate that. And it's usually, you know, straight up uh, putting a decorator on top of that, and that should work uh, mostly. But you can do some more um, advanced things with the, the mixings from Django Braces. So that was first, and I had a, a question about how do you deal with uh, testing of class-based views? Because one of the problems you can have is that your as view method just gives you a, a function which is a black box and you, you're not able to test as a class, like unit tests when you want, only want to test the method of your class, you have to set up the URL routing and everything in your test. Uh, so how do you deal with that? Yeah. Um, well, sorry, because I didn't test my class-based views until now. Um, but no, 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 don't no, completely no, 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 true. But um, I deal with tests. Uh, I can deal in two two ways, uh, two functions, assessing the as view and the view function inside it. So by testing just the function nature of my class, or I can test the class itself. But um, well, you're you you have to pay attention because class based views are not uh, well you you have not to instance the class you have to test the class itself so perhaps it's better to work with some um more abstract tests um well i i implemented some tests and i i can agree it's not a uh, a simple topic you have to dig inside it. I don't know if there is some framework already to, to, to test them. I, I don't know this. So, okay. Anyone else? Okay. Thank you. Last time, Leonardo. So now it's Simone, it's Simone.